Hey guys, today on In The Shop, we're gonna be talking about the Ford 6.0 liter diesel, high pressure oil leaks. We're gonna talk about the tools we use to diagnose them and some of the parts we use to repair them. Stay tuned, guys. So at first you wanna verify your base oil pressure. Once you verify the air base, you need to check to make sure you have at least 500 PSI of ICP while cranking and make sure that IPR duty cycle never goes over 85%. If it reaches 85%, you have a leak. So you're going to need a few things to do this. Um, obviously, a basic set of hand tools to gain access to everything, uh, sockets, wrenches, screwdrivers. But a few of the specialty tools you're going to need are the fittings that fit in the oil rails. There's two different styles. There's one for the late 04 where the ICP is in the valve cover and up. And then there's another style for the, the early 04 and the 03s. You have to actually take the valve cover off. There's a little fitting on the oil rail and you take that out and you can thread this right in. All right, guys. So once you verify you have low high pressure oil, the next thing you do want to do is take out your ICP sensor. Um, I'm going to show you most of the stuff on a motor that we have here that's, that's easily accessible just so it's a little easy for you guys to see what's going on. So you're going to grab either a 24 millimeter or a 15 16 both the same size. I'm just going to take that ICP sensor out. Once you get the ICP sensor out, you're going to take your airline with the special fittings thread it into the oil rail. Once you get the fitting threaded in, next step is to put shop air to it. I like to leave the IPR open for now. Um, let some of the air push through the rail, push some of the oil out of there. It's a little easier to detect the smaller leaks when you get the majority of the oil out of the oil rails. Once you've let the air cycle through for a little while, the next step you're going to want to do is energize the uh, injection pressure regulator. The absolute best way to do this is with your scan tool. Now, some of us don't have the luxury of a scan tool, so I'll show you the way that you can do it in your driveway. You can either get a specialized harness like this. It's got two alligator clips on one end, and it's got an IPR connector on this end. And then what you'll do is you'll, you'll plug that into the injection pressure regulator, and then you'll hook it up to a battery, and that'll energize the IPR. You need to be real careful with this because if you energize it for too long, you can actually burn out the IPR. So I like to limit it to like one minute intervals at a time. Now, if you really want to get crafty, you can purchase an IPR pigtail off of Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. And you can make your own harness like this to energize the IPR. Like I said, make sure you're real careful because these IPRs are super sensitive. You can burn them out real easy. So once you get the IPR energized, next thing you're going to do is I use a automotive style stethoscope. You can use a piece of heater hose if, if you really need to. Put one end of the heater hose to your ear and then put the other end over. So what we do here is I take the little tip out and use just this end. And I take the oil cap off and I take the intake off and then I try to determine which side is coming from. So we're going to listen to this side, and then we're going to listen to the driver's side. Hold it right over the hole where the breather goes through for the PCV system. Sounds to me like it's coming more out of the uh, driver's side. So we're going to pop that valve cover off and tear into it a little bit. So once you get the valve cover off, you can do the same thing. Grab your stethoscope and try to listen around and see if you can hear kind of where it's coming from. This one sounds like it's coming from the front. Now looking at it, I can see it has the old style dummy plugs. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop out these dummy plugs, look at the O-rings, and see what we got. Now you want to make sure you release the air pressure from the system before you start taking anything apart. Otherwise you're going to be in for, uh, for a pretty big surprise once, the, uh, once you get past the seals.
So once we get this dummy plug out, you can see the bottom O-ring has actually failed. It's pretty common on these. They start to erode, and then the high pressure oil gets past that. Especially, this will usually cause like a no start hot. A lot of times it will start on when it's cold. As soon as it warms up, you go into a grocery store or you know you go in for a case of beer and you you come back out and the truck just cranks until it cools off and then it'll fire back up. So Ford's made three versions of these dummy plugs. The first one is the uh, the first fit. You can tell they're original because they have a square drive, a half inch ratchet will fit right in that. Um, usually if you take your valve covers off and you see these, just replace them anyway because even if they're not giving you trouble now, they're going to in the future. So in the next ones they made, they had this eight millimeter Allen. Didn't really solve the problem. It's pretty much the exact same thing. It just has a has a different top to it. So the latest release they have, they've been out for a while now, is this size. They have a 12 millimeter up at the top. And what they did was they used these little plastic washers. And it kind of helps keep the O-ring from moving around. So the O-ring doesn't actually wear out. And it also helps keep this dummy plug from bouncing around inside the rail. Because what actually happens is when you have that real high pressure this dummy plug will actually move inside the rail a little and that's what will wear this out. They've done the same thing with the standpipes. The original standpipes just had the single O-ring. The updated ones in the spot that they fail, they went ahead and put this plastic, this plastic washer to help stabilize it. So we went ahead and replaced this dummy plug. Um, we can see that this standpipe is the old square drive, so we're going to replace this standpipe also. But we just want to verify that we, we got the leak. So what we did is we went ahead and put some air to it, hook the IPR back up, energize it, and uh, just listen. I mean, we can hear pretty clearly on this one. We solved the leak, so like I said, go ahead and replace that standpipe just as a preventative measure, and then you can get this button back up. So I want to go over a couple of the other spots that you can have leaks from. Uh, one of them, and there seems to be a lot of questions about this, so I'm going to go over how to replace them, is the O-rings that go inside the injector tops, the, the nipple cup seals. Um, they're fairly easy to replace. Uh, I like to use these kits from Alliant Power. Um, I'll put a link to the, in the description for this. comes with instructions, tells you exactly what to do. Um, and you use one of these tools, you, you can get this off of Amazon or, or anywhere. And then uh, you just take out the nut around it, replace the seal, and then torque it back down. Another place they can leak is on the late 04 and up style high pressure pumps. If it has the original fitting on the pump, they call it a snap to connect fitting. It literally was a two piece fitting that would snap together and what would happen is over time, the C-clip that holds it in place would fail and the fitting would blow apart. So they've updated it a couple of times over the years. The newest one out is this solid fitting. It has a jam nut. Um, when you get this fitting from Ford, it comes with the instructions on exactly how to, how to install this. Um, just make sure it's nice and straight. And then the other thing to look out for too is if you did have the old style fitting and it blew apart, check your rear cover to make sure when it blew apart it didn't hit the rear cover and break that. I have seen that you get a high pressure oil leak and then the truck ends up coming back with uh, with a major external oil leak because the rear engine cover is actually split open. So aside from that there's not a whole lot of places these can leak. We do have them occasionally coming from the top of the injectors. Um, if you get these Alliant Power injector reseal kits, it's all the O-rings that you need, the copper washer, all the O-rings for the body, injector body itself, and they also are the only kit that includes the O-ring for the top of the injector where it meets the oil rail. Um, we change these on every one we do. Sometimes once these get worn out, they're usually about time due for injectors, but you know sometimes you're on a budget, you can save yourself a little bit and just re-O-ring them. And that helps. 
The other issue you can have is the actual injection pressure regulator itself. Um, the way to determine this would be you don't notice any change in airflow when you energize the IPR. Um, you'd be listening with the stethoscope. You could energize it and de-energize it, and you notice no change. What we'll do at that point is we'll pull it out and inspect the screen. A lot of times, the screen will be blown right through. If that's the case, the next thing you really should be looking at is the screen underneath your oil cooler. Most of the time, these end up compromised. When you take your oil cooler out and you see the screen below there, this is the last stop before the oil goes straight to the high pressure pump. So if this fails and you get debris going through this, a lot of times from a bad oil cooler job, if the person wasn't clean when they were working on it, you can get debris that makes it all the way to the IPR, blows through the screen, jams the IPR wide open, and then it just dumps the oil pressure off. Occasionally, you can have a pump failure. Believe it or not, it's pretty rare. A lot of people replace high pressure pumps, and uh, most of the time it's unneeded. Usually the sign of a bad high pressure pump is if uh, you can't find a high pressure oil leak with the air check, but you still have low high pressure oil. Um, on the early style pumps, the round ones in the 03 and early 04, sometimes you'll lose a little machining ball where they made the port to feed the oil. But a lot of times when that happens, you'll have low base oil pressure or you'll get like a low oil pressure light flashing on the dashboard. Um, so typically with a high pressure oil leak, it's not the pump. So to replace these oil rail seals, you can need a couple of things. You can need an oil rail socket. You can need a half inch drive ratchet or, or three eighths. I mean, these things are on there pretty tight, so I like to use a longer ratchet. Uh, bench vise or something to hold this solid. These are a torque to 100 foot pounds, so you need to make sure these are really clamped well, otherwise it, it will come flying out. Um, you need a torque wrench that goes to 100 foot pounds. Now you want to make sure you have a clean work area because uh, anytime you're working with the fuel system or the high pressure oil system, the last thing you want to do is get debris in any of this. Uh, I mean, most of this stuff is post filtration, so anything you get in here is going straight into your injectors. So what you want to do is, as you can see, this one's pretty loose. The O-ring is pretty worn out. So we're going to use the, the rail tool. Crack it free. Then you can take you can take out the oil rail nipple. Now down inside here is where the oil ring lives. Sometimes you may need a pick to get this out. When you look at them, usually you can tell when they're worn, they kind of get a little bit of a squared off edge to them. So we'll toss that. Install the new O-ring down in there. Another thing to look out for is just inspect this oil rail nipple because sometimes in a real extreme case you can actually feel a groove on here. This one looks good so I can say we can reuse that one. The tool will actually recenter the oil rail nipple. Then we're going to torque it down to 100 foot-pounds. You can see how much tighter that is in there. Well guys, I hope this has been helpful. Hopefully it saves you a little bit of time and money. Um, a lot of times uh, I know the feeling you're stuck in your driveway, you're trying to figure this out on your own and you're just throwing parts at it hoping something sticks. Um, hopefully you took something out of this video and it can, it can help prevent that a little bit. Um, you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll try to help you guys out as much as I can. And as always, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more. We're here to help. Thanks for watching in the shop.